Hi, Fofamin here. Want to learn how to make cool, awesome YouTube videos for your VTuber avatar? And what if I told you I can show you how to use one of the most powerful video editing softwares out there? And, and it's 100% free. <laughs> Please stick to the end of the video to learn a little bit more. This video is brought to you by Private Internet Access. For safe, secure web browsing to make it seem like you're from any country in the world, please click on the link in the video's description down below. Using that link really helps support the channel. And if you want to, <laughs> if you want to have a conversation with me or have any questions about any of my videos or just anything in general, you can always ha come into my Twitch channel whenever I'm streaming Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays, and Sundays, and we can have a great conversation there. So the first thing you need to do is go to the D Black Magic Design website and look up Vin Da Vinci Resolve, or you can just do what I do and just Google search Da Vinci Resolve as spelt here. I'll make sure that the link is in the video description down below. And then here, you're just gonna see a big download button and you're gonna click on it. Boop. There's a couple of different options here. What you wanna make sure is that you do not get the studio version because the studio version is actually the paid version. And the difference between the paid version studio versus the regular resolve is that you just get a little bit more features, but for the most part, you're not gonna need those. What you're gonna do then is choose which one you wanna download. Um, so we're gonna stick with uh, DaVinci Resolve 16 and you're gonna go ahead and click Windows and download it. And then just install it like you normally would. Once you have DaVinci Resolve open, um, you should see something like this. I'm using, I'm still using DaVinci Resolve 15. I do recommend going to the new version. I just haven't updated yet. So what you're gonna do is click on new project and you're gonna name it whatever you want to. So I'm just gonna call it green screen test. Just like that. And then now you're open into the application. So now you're going to see a couple options. Uh, you're going to see these things on the bottom here. So the main ones that you're really, really going to need to worry about is this one here called the edit timeline. Now, if you go to my Twitter page, you're going to be able to find a green screen copy of this video. I'll make sure the link for that's in the description. So then once you have the video downloaded, all you have to do is just click and drag it into the timeline, just like this. And it might ask you something like the clips have a different frame rate than the current project settings. Just, you can either choose to change or not change. In this case, I wanna make sure that the frame rate matches my original clip, so the main clip. So I'm gonna click change. And then you're gonna see it here in your library. What I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna click and drag this into the timeline, just like that. And then now we can actually have the ability to scrub through and view the footage. And this is me in my poor attempt of trying to do the Shia LaBeouf meme, but uh, I just, I just couldn't. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to get rid of the green screen. On the bottom of the screen, you're going to see this color wheel and we're going to click on it. And this is going to give us the ability to remove that green background that we want to get rid of. So now in the node section right here, you're going to right click and add alpha output. And then basically you're going to see your little node, which is your clip right here. And you're going to click and drag this blue section right here to the alpha output. And that's basically telling us uh, where the alpha output is going to go from the clip. So now we're going to go to this eyedropper tool and we're going to be selecting the color. So there's um, the best way to do this is go to here when the eyedropper tool and then you're going to see this drop down menu that says HSL. This is how it's going to select the color and you're going to go to 3D. And with 3D, it allows us to give us a little option to draw all the colors we want to remove. This is just a flat color, and this is allowing us to select all of that color range. So right now we have all of this green selected. So what we're going to do now is we want to reverse that selection. So we're going to click invert and it's now inverted that selection. So what you see now is that you see there's a little bit of a faint green outline right here. So the despill option is um, pretty good. If you want to be able to adjust that granularity a little bit, here you can click on the softness and click and drag it up or down. Personally, I'm just going to keep it at the default. And uh, one more thing you want to do is if you want to be able to make the resize the clip without having any weird border issues, you're going to go to here and you're going to go to window 
And what you want to do is you're going to add a square like this, a square window. You're going to turn the softness down to zero and all around. And then you're going to resize it to be um, the size of the entire clip. So usually that's about 75 for me. Now, when we go back to the main screen, we're going to see everything is black here. Now, all you have to do is just add a clip that you want to have in the background. So I'm just going to click and drag uh, this clip. And it's going to click that into my library. And this is uh, actually my intro. And we're going to we're going to click and drag that into the timeline just like this. And what I'm going to do is I want to make sure that my newly green screen removed background, I want to make sure that I can move that onto the top. So I'm going to just click and drag that to the top like that. And then I'm going to move this main clip, the background down there, just like that. And now we'll see. But I want to mute the video. So I'm just going to mute this audio right here. Say so if you wanted to remove the audio, what you can do here is on a video clip, you can right click, link clips, unlink clips, and then all you have to do is select the audio file itself, right click, and then delete selected, and then the audio is gone. So now when we play the clip so far, we can have our footage like this. Do it! <laughs> okay, and that's how you basically do a very basic green screen. So now the next thing we're going to do is how to do some cool zoom or transform effects that you might have seen in some of my videos, like the beginning of this one. So what you're going to do is you're going to click on your clip and then here in the inspector, you're going to have, you're going to see this transform and you're going to see these little diamonds. These diamonds are keyframe areas. Basically think of them like little bookmarks where you can bookmark where you want specific things to happen. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to click on this diamond at the very beginning, and then we're going to watch our audio. We're just going to play it back. Do it. Okay. So right now, right on the do it, I'm going to click another uh, keyframe and dial that in. Now what I'm going to do is in this part, I want to have it so it zooms into my face. So on this keyframe, I'm going to just zoom it in like this. And you can reposition it with the X and Y axis, just like that. Now, if you're having any weird, if you're having, if you want to zoom in or out and you're having any weird issues, just make sure that you added that window frame that we added earlier when we were talking about how to do the green screen and remove the background. You're not quite done here. So what you'll actually notice is that if you play this back, if you just leave it like this, what's actually going to happen is that it slowly zooms in and we don't want that. Do it. How do we fix this? So what you can do is just go back to this last part that you want to keep. And then just, if you want to have like a really quick zoom, what you're going to do is go back a couple frames just by using the arrow keys on your keyboard. So I'm going to go back about that much. And then here, I'm just going to reset. I'm going to add a new keyframe and then I'm going to reset this back to uh, the zoom of one and then reset the position just like that. So now what we're going to see is this. Do it. And then I'm going to add another keyframe just afterwards and then I'm just going to have it reset as well. So now what well, we see the end result is like this. Do it. And then what if I wanted to have my, let's say my avatar just get really, really small on the screen. So it's just basically the same thing. All you got to do is just do the opposite. So I'm going to add another keyframe. Do Go here. So I'm adding a keyframe right before the moment that I want to actually have it do the quick zoom action. So Wait. right afterwards here, add another keyframe and then I'm going to zoom out like this. Ooh. And then shortly after I'm going to add another keyframe and then just have it reset back to normal. So now we're going to take a look at that. Do it. Do 
Just do it. Make your dreams come true. <laughs> and you can also do the same thing if you want to have a transform in terms of positioning. So I'm going to have my position set here. And then I see I'm going to drag it over here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it so that it travels. Let's say off the screen there. So you'll see that. Do it. Just do it. Make your dreams come true. <laughs> and you can see the transform yeah. happening right there. Okay, so there's two ways you can do this. I have my intro here, which is a little bit too long. So we're going to set it back to that. Uh, another way, let's say if this clip is really, really long and you don't want to be able to click and drag it, you click on this razor tool and it should automatically snap to the nearest clip. And then here you can just right click and delete it. Now, if you wanted to add an image, adding an image is also very similar. You just click and drag that into your library and then you can just click and drag that onto the timeline. So for example, I'm gonna make it so that like right around here, you can just make an image appear. So if we go like this, I make can make the image go to nothing. But then when we go to here, <laughs> the image will just be like, boop, like that. And we can see. <laughs> So once you're finished your video editing and you want to be able to export it to like, let's say YouTube or Twitter, all you have to do is go to this little rocket ship down below and we're going to name our file. So we're going to call this like green screen test. And personally, I think the best way to export it is an MP4 and then uh, everything else you can just pretty much keep the same settings and just go to add to render queue. And it's going to ask you where you want to save it. So I'm going to save it right here in my F drive with all my other junk and then click save. And then you're going to hit start render and it's going to start rendering out the video. And then once it's done, you'll be able to have your full video file ready to go. All right. So it is finished rendering. So all you have to do now is just make sure that you save your project and then you can close it out. And now you should have a brand new file saved, ready to go right here. Do it! Just hopefully you found that video helpful. If you want to learn more on how to do VTuber recording or streaming or how to do any live capture stuff, I'll also include links in the video description down below. And you also might see some things uh, pop up somewhere on the screen as well.